Welcome to the Transparent FX Academy. I'm Nick and I'm a top author on TradingView with over 190K reputation points. In this video, I will be speaking about NZD USD. Now, as usual, to keep the video as educational as possible, first I will be covering the technical aspect for this market, then we will be moving to the order flow by looking at the commitment of traders, so the COD data, so essentially what hedge funds and the big players in the market are doing and how they're moving their orders. And by the end of the video, by using a combination of these two different types of analysis, we will try to understand where we have the highest probabilities for the next potential move here for this pair. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. This is the place to be for high quality, free trading education. Now, without further ado, Let's jump straight onto the charts. Starting here from the monthly time frame, what we can see is that at the moment we have a market which is testing a quite strong historical support and demand area. From here, in fact, all these previous rejections to the upside have been created. And what we can see is that just last month we had another test of the exact same zone. And in a situation like this, what we could expect is more bullish price action to be created as already happened in the past when the market tested the exact same zone. So from a monthly standpoint, everything seems quite bullish. We can also notice if we look at the most recent price action, that from a pattern standpoint, we have a clear impulse followed by this correction. And in general, after an impulse, if you want to measure the correction, you have to take your Fibonacci from the low to the high of the impulse leg. And if we do that, we can see how we have a 0.618 and 0.786 Fibonacci retracements lining up exactly in this zone, therefore creating a confluence of support in this area that we could expect this market to reject to the upside even further because when you have confluence of support and the market tests it and rejects it to the upside, there is an increased probability that inside of that confluence of support, we actually got institutional longing. And we will be speaking about institutional longing in just a few minutes when we move to the commitment of traders. But for now, let's drop down on the weekly time frame and see what we have. Well, here in the weekly, the situation is quite clear as well. We can notice how we just had a shift of structure and of the trend from a bearish trend to now a bullish trend. In fact, the market went from creating lower lows and lower highs to now creating higher highs and higher lows. So in a situation like this, we could expect more bullish price action to be created away from this level. We can also notice that here we had previous weekly resistance turn support, which the market just tested. In fact, this level was acting as previous resistance here, preceding this rejection to the downside. Then the market broke above the zone and that previous resistance was turned support. The market tested it as support here, respected it as support, and started rejecting it to the upside. So from a weekly standpoint, everything seems quite bullish and we could expect more bullish continuation to be created away from this level. So the weekly time frame as well seems like it has shifted to the same direction of the monthly time frame. Now let's go down on the daily and see if it is aligned. Now here in the daily, this structure is very clear, but before we dig deeper into what we have here from a technical perspective, first, let's go and see what we have when it comes to the commitment of traders. So what the big players in the market are doing, and let's check the data precisely for the NZD. Now, what we can see here is that with the last reports, we just had a massive shift from a bearish market to now a bullish market from an institutional perspective. We went, in fact, from having way more shorts than longs from an institutional standpoint with a negative net positioning of minus 13.5K net positions with 27.2K shorts compared to only 13.7K longs, all the way up to now having a positive net positioning of 26.9K longs compared to only 24.8K shorts. And now we're sitting with a positive net positioning, meaning that institutions have more short, more longs than shorts and have moved back to the bullish side. And we could expect this to continue considering that we are rejecting that monthly support. So that is definitely a possibility. So let's keep that in mind and move back to the chart. And by the way, if you still haven't, make sure that you join my free Telegram channel, which you find both on the screen and also linked in description. So you never miss new updates. Now back to the analysis. 
Well, here in the daily, the situation is quite clear as well, as we were saying. I also spoke about NZDUSD just a few days ago after this impulse and correction from here explained all the reasons for which we could expect this move to the upside. Then again, I made another breakdown explaining all the reasons for which I expected first a correction and then a higher high, and then also here a correction and a higher high, which again is exactly what the market did. And by the way, I will link in description all those previous analysis, so you can go and check them out for more free education. But at the moment, what do we have from a structure standpoint? Well, clearly the important level is this one here. This zone was acting as previous resistance here and here. Now the market has just successfully broke above this zone, which is now previous resistance turned support. So in a situation like this, what definitely could be the case is that the market goes and tests exactly this previous resistance turned support, and then it rejects it to the upside. Because on the test of the support, there is the possibility of seeing more institutional longing since already we have seen that, which at that point could further increase the probabilities of this potential rejection to the upside away from the area. So in a situation like this, what would I expect? Well, as usual, trading is reactive and not predictive. The monthly, weekly, and daily timeframes combined with the COT data, those are the best timeframes when it comes to the directional aspect of the market. However, when it comes to identifying early shifts in the trend of a market, the best timeframes for that are the intraday timeframes. So for our and lower. Therefore, what I would expect is that if this market would shift, from an intraday bearish to a bullish market at that point, I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see a potential rejection to the upside away from this area. Now, if you want to learn more, I really suggest that you go and check out the transparentfxtrading.com website, which you find linked in description. From here, in fact, you will have the possibility to gain access to my entire courses. You will also have the possibility to gain access to one-on-one -on -one live private mentoring directly with me, the VIP market breakdowns with the Telegram signals, the COT data software, which is precisely the one that we used in this video, the trading station software, which puts together everything that you need as a trader all in one interface. And if you continue to scroll down the website past the testimonials, you will see that you have the possibility to join and gain automatically access with email and password that you will create during the sign-up process. So I really suggest that you go and check it out as soon as possible. The link is in the description and I will see you in it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. Also, let me know in the comments below any pairs or topics that you would like me to cover in the next videos. And I will see you in my next breakdown.